Are we on right now? Oh, I was just saying hi to Susie. We're Susie. live, honey. Susie's here already. We're, we, uh, yeah, we have prayer meeting at 11 o'clock. Susie's a prayer warrior. Yes, you be praying right, for us. So Thank you, dear. She got here early today. So you can pray while we're doing this, Susie. Okay? <laughs> But I'll shall I'll quick do the announcements, or do you want to do the word first? Right? Yeah. Okay. Word. Joyce will do the word first, and then we'll do the announcements. So we want to say good morning to you. This is a Wednesday morning. I don't remember the date. Fifteenth. December fifteenth. Okay. Yeah, December fifteenth. So this morning, um, I'm just going to share from my heart. And Steve was saying, well, what, what do you have? Well, what I thought I was going to share, I set it aside this morning because this is what happened this morning. When the alarm rang at 6 o'clock, Steve got out of bed quickly. I knew he did. I did not want to get out of bed this morning. I didn't feel like getting out of bed. And um, I don't know if you're like me, but if you're having that frustration, like, oh, I don't want to get out, you don't sleep anyway. But I kind of laid there 15 more minutes, and then I got out. And I just like, you know what? I just feel like staying in my bathrobe today and just, well, obviously we got lots of Christmas gifts uh, to package and wrap. And I love doing that, but it was like, no, I know this is the day we go to church. We have staff meeting. We have touch point. We have prayer. So anyway, I sat down in my quiet spot, and every morning, the first thing I do is I read from my Gems by Rick Renner daily calendar. And the very first words I read, it was the scripture was Romans 12, verse 11. It was, be not slothful in your business. So the very first words I read this morning, don't be slothful. I thought, oh, brother, that's not very encouraging. <laughs> I need... You know, like a happy, clappy word. But I looked at it and I thought, that's how I feel. Like I want to be like a sloth. I want to be slothful. Not just this morning, but the whole day. So what I did, I did read Grandma's Gleanings. Uh, I read my Proverbs. But then I kept thinking about that scripture. I decided to do a study on it. And I'm going to share that with you today. So you know how I was feeling from uh, the King James Version, it says, and I personalize it, Joyce, don't be slothful in your business, or it means in, um, in diligence. That was one of the things I thought, well, that makes sense. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The New King James Version says, not lagging, I felt like lagging this morning, in diligence, but being fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. <clears throat> and usually, Steve knows, usually I'm, I do well with the mornings. I'm, I know what, I, what needs to be done, things at home, and if, I'm going to work at Red Umbrella or church if we're going to go to Bemidji. I, I do well with those things. I don't know why I was feeling slothful this morning. But I went to the original Greek, my app on my phone, for studying that scripture. And where it says slothful, it means to not be slothful, but to be earnest, 
careful doing things with speed. I did not feel speedy this morning. Doing things earnestly. And I just thought I can change my attitude. I can change my attitude. That's how I want to be today about uh, coming to do the things here at church. It means do not be slow or tardy or hesitating or delaying. That's what it means in the original Greek for the word slothful. None of those words sounds good. But I think if we're honest, we all have times where that's how we feel like being or doing. That's our attitude. But we can change. So this morning, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you know what we need to hear from you and how we need to hear it. And we're just saying, we have good hearts. We have hearts that love you, Lord. We love your word. And so even like this morning when it wasn't the word I expected, I could sense, Lord, your truth. Because you love me, you were dealing truly with my heart. And... Um, Thank you, Lord, with each of our hearts, each of us that are listening, Father, in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord, this morning for your sweetness to us, for your goodness to us, for you being our helper. You help us in those times when we feel like being like a sloth. What is it? A sloth is an animal, isn't it? Yeah. Very slow-moving animal. Very slow-moving does it have a long nose, or am I thinking of something else? No, it's no, it's, it's a different thing. It's an elephant. It's a what? Elephant has a long nose. <laughs> you said an elephant has a long <laughs> nose. You know what, honey? I know that. <laughs> Trunk. Trunk. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm just sharing this morning. I did have like my little enjoy journal. Originally, that's why I thought it would share. But um, this is okay, it. So, so it's Romans 12, 11. And yeah, later yeah. at the end, <clears throat> Joy's going to bring us around. We're going to look at some more Christmas decorating here in the church building. So now I'll let you go to Steve. Well, in line with what I get that uh, what Joyce was sharing in that verse, now lagging in diligence fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That's what our lives really are. We're servants of the Lord. We love the Lord. Yes. He was the great suffering servant. You know, the book of Isaiah has a lot of passages that talk about the suffering servant. Well, that was Jesus, and he suffered greatly for us. But now we have the privilege of serving him because he's recreated us or we're created in his image, really. And he has good works that he has for us to do, but he wants us to do them with a cheerful heart. We, he doesn't want us to be a Scrooge. You know who Scrooge is? You know who Scrooge is, Joy? You know who Scrooge is, Susie? <laughs> Christmas Carol, you know, we... It's interesting how many offshoots of the Christmas Carol there are. And the Scrooge's attitude, you know, is not a good attitude. It's a bad one. He, he, was, he was not fervent in spirit for the Lord. But after his transformation, if you've seen the end of the story, you see what happens. He is exuberant. Exuber, exuberant. And... Um, Anyway, you're looking at that verse there, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit. Well, that word fervent, that's a Greek word, zeo. Zeo is how you say it. And it means to live with fervor. 
as a believer, to live with fervor, fiery hot, full of burning zeal. Ooh. Did you hear that? Is that how your life is today and what you're doing? I'm going to change. <laughs> Living is the opposite of dignified, cold, like a Scrooge, or even unemotional, just being drab and sad and l kind of lifeless and just kind of moping. Mm and kind of groping through life, sad, moping, groping. Do you like to be around those kind of people, Joy? <laughs> Joy sure has a good name for this subject, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's the opposite of those, and it signifies a high spiritual temperature. What is your Ooh. spiritual temperature today? Inflamed by the Holy Spirit. Are you inflamed by the Holy Spirit today? Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Dean, are you inflamed I'm by the Holy Spirit? I'm inflamed by today? the Holy Spirit <laughs> and Jesus. <laughs> You're kindling it. Okay. So, and then there's a scripture in Colossians 3.23, and it says, And whatsoever you do, mm. what does that mean? It means anything you do, I guess, right? Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, do it mm. slothfully <laughs> as unto the Lord. <laughs> no. It says, do it heartily. Heartily. As to the Lord and not to men. We're not doing it for people. It's for the Lord. That's how he wanted, would want us to live because if we just stop and think about it and are grateful, we can be just so thankful for what we have in him, even though there may be negative things going on around us. You know, I think Scrooge is a real good example. You know, he yes. was transformed. And, yes. and uh, I mean, he's just dancing, you know, when he, after he... <laughs> He wakes up and he knows it's Christmas, still Christmas, you know. He was alive and he still had the opportunity. He had the opportunity to live heartily. Mm -mm. A spirit inflamed, I mean mm -hmm. alive, a glow mm -hmm. with the spirit. Maybe that's where that scripture is mm -hmm. in some other places, a glow with the spirit. Yeah. But as heartily as unto the Lord. Did you have something? Yeah. Um, Passion Bible for that verse says... And put your name in there. Joyce, or whoever you are, put your heart and soul into every activity you do as though you're doing it for the Lord himself, not merely for others. I like that. So it goes on there. It says, and okay, whatsoever you, this is Colossians 3, 23 and 24 now. And whatsoever you do, whatever you're doing. So what are you doing today? You know, whatever it is. Do it heartily as unto the Lord, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. You, for Lord. you serve the Lord, Lord Christ. Yes, we do, Lord. And it's the thing where we do it with cheerfulness. You know, that's another scripture that's back there in Romans 12, verse 8. It says, he who shows mercy or empathy, let him do it with cheerfulness. You know, and that's the thing with giving. You know, when we give to someone, well, you know, someone that wherever there might be a need or someone just even for our Christmas presents, you know, or, or maybe it's to the Lord, you know, giving of our tithes and offerings or whatever. We'll let him do it with cheerfulness. We're told that in, where is that, Second Corinthians 9? For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. That's what it says there. <laughs> cheerful. So you know what I think of? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. 
So yesterday was a Christmas shopping day for us. Presents. We were looking for presents. Presents. And um, we didn't want big stores to start out with, so we went to Walgreens. And I remember saying to Steve, we had quite a list, but I remember saying, you know what? It's pretty easy to shop in Walgreens. Everything's organized, um, whatever. Well, when we first start looking, it was like for stocking stuffers for the seven grandkids. Um, Steve loves to bag it. You find it, you bag it, you're out of the store. And he feels like he conquered that. I mean, whatever. But it was appearing like we were looking at everything and there was nothing going into the cart. <laughs> so we had to develop our cheerful. Oh, I wasn't real cheerful. <laughs> But we did find, actually found a lot of stuff eventually. But maybe that's part of the season. Maybe the thing with people is we need to be reminded to be cheerful give, givers with the whole well, thing of Christmas. I think that's where it's here. taking us, Joy. Okay, we'll go back to Steve. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so we're at cheerful giving. And, and the word cheerful there, it's... From the Greek word hilaris, hilaris, hilaritus, hilaritus, hmm. hilarity. That sounds. That's where hilarious comes from. You ever heard that word, Joy? Hilarious. What does that mean? Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. So okay, here's what my word wealth in my Bible says about cheerfulness for that hilaritus. It's graciousness, joyfulness, gladness, benevolence, amiability. Do you know what amiability is? Friendly. Isn't it? Is it? I guess so. I I'm not know. sure. Gladness. Okay. Cheerfulness, gaiety, affability. I don't know if I've heard of that word. Do you know what affability is? No, I is? don't. I, I guess. Either. Yeah. Do you know what affability is? Joy has it. <laughs> she Googled it. Okay, affability is the quality of having a friendly and good natured manner. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. sounds right. Yeah. That sounds good. Um in the lands during the Bible days they used this word. It was like the heart is laughing and the eyes are dancing. Oh, I like that. The heart is laughing and the eyes are dancing. I like that. You know, that makes me think of Christmas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes me think of a child waking up on Christmas morning and coming down the stairs from their bedroom <laughs> or wherever they are or up the stairs and seeing the Christmas tree and seeing mm -hmm. all the presents under the tree. Mm -hmm. Their hearts are dancing or what is it? Their eyes are dancing, and their heart is laughing inside. <laughs> but that's how we're to be givers, too, not just receivers. We know the word says it's more blessed to give than to receive, right? The word was often used for the cheerful demeanor of those visiting the sick or infirm and of those giving alms or gifts. The person who exhibits this hilaritas is a sunbeam lighting up a sick room or a needy place with warmth and love. I Ooh, really like that. That's good. I like that. Hallelujah. Shall I read that one more time? I think I'll close with that then. We'll get ready to turn it over to Pastor Dean here in a minute. But. This is what the Lord is bringing to us today because Christmas time can become a stressful time. I was almost starting to feel that there a little bit yesterday morning when our cart was empty. We had other things we needed to do, but we needed to get stuffing stuffers, stucking stuff, <laughs> st stuck, 
Stocking. Stocking stuffers. <laughs> and it just wasn't happening. But thank, thank you, Lord, you helped us finally. But I wasn't this person for a bit there, I must confess. But then, this is the person who exhibits cheerfulness, is a sunbeam lighting up the room, whether it's a sick room or a classroom or a work room or a church house or wherever it is, with warmth and love. I do like that. I do like that. Just be, we got some really important announcements in, in a little bit. We'll get back to that in a moment. But Pastor Dean's got something here. Oh, good morning. And it's been on my heart the last few days. Romans 12, what, what uh, you've been talking about. And <clears throat> through tomorrow night, our Zoom meeting, I'm planning on talking about Romans 12 here and the anointing that God has placed on each of our lives. And there's three th ways that God describes it, or Paul describes it here. They all describe the same act of impartation, but describe it in three different ways. The first is gift, the second is grace, and then the third is faith. And so all those three are involved in the anointing of God that he has put on us for our service in the body. So they're all unique to us and have our, we have our own flavor from heaven. And, and I want to focus uh, tomorrow night on grace. And so the, uh, the Apostle Paul says in verse 6, Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. And so there's a grace on our life. And I want to, tomorrow night I'm planning on taking some time and talking about this grace and how it's so unique to each of us. But it's the presence of God upon us, but then flowing through us. And it's just there. Yes. And it just, yes. you know, we don't have to make Amen. it happen. Amen. Yes. But we just need Amen. to learn to cooperate with God. And so, uh, yes. I invite you to come Amen. and join with us on yes. 7.30 on Thursday night on Zoom. And I believe we'll have a really great time. So I think that's, that's a really good point with what we were just sharing about, too, because, you know, we talk about this cheerfulness. And uh, being like a sunbeam light, lighting up a room, well, naturally speaking, in the natural, we aren't that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit in it. That, that's why the other scriptures we were looking at before, it's a flame with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit coming out of us. That's how God is. But anyway... Here's a few announcements coming up. Um, you know, I, there's something that just, <clears throat> for me, um, an ongoing key for what we've been sharing is the thing of praying in the spirit. Because no, that goes important. past my mind, my emotions, my whatever. It's from my spirit. But that affects me in a good way. It affects yeah. my thinking, my attitude, my outlook. So we're so thankful, the thing of just looking to the Lord and um, praying in the Spirit, praying to Him, loving Him, singing, oh, this morning, Steve was listening to... He listens to music all the time. And this morning, that added to my morning because it wasn't Christmas carols. It wasn't um, whatever. you had. It was some song. It wasn't about Scrooge. 
Remember which one you were listening to while you were eating breakfast? You are a mean one, Mr. Grinch? Yes! <laughs> that's what was playing and that's how I felt. That's I felt like being mean to Steve. I felt like saying, I don't want to go today. And here, he never plays that song. Oh, I didn't. I didn't say any, he didn't know I was having a morning like that, but of all songs to be listening I to. I, I, think, I think I kind of had some indications. You played it on purpose? <laughs> no. Oh, no, I just, they, they just have their playlist. <laughs> well, I heard that one. I think I heard it all the way from my ba my bathroom when I was getting ready and you were in the kitchen. Did you have the volume up or something? <laughs> Anyway, same as go Mar back to Steve. <laughs> same as always. Oh, my. But that's the thing, too. A Scrooge, we talked about Scrooge. Well, Grinch is another good example. <laughs> but he had, didn't he get kind of born again, too, Grinch? Well, I don't know. He got touched with the Christmas message. But anyway, hallelujah. So, tonight at 6 o'clock, we have youth group here at PCC and also children's ministry. Pastor Dean already mentioned Thursday night. Uh, Friday night, we're having a Christmas concert here. Kent Dudley and Bended Knee. Chantel, his wife, of course, with them, and the rest of the crew will be having a Christmas concert right here at 7 o'clock. Uh, there will be a free will offering, and you can also bring uh, goods for canned the food. Canned goods, so canned. they don't perish. Yeah, non-perishable. Canned goods. And then on Sunday, we're having a Christmas service, um, and we're calling, it's the first, actually last Sunday was kind of a Christmas service too. Uh, that was our Christmas story, and uh, we were sharing, actually I shared my own Christmas story along with another one. But I uh, shared Christmas is past, Christmas present, and then we were even looking toward the future and some transitions that Joyce and I see coming in our role here at TCC. And if you did not get an opportunity to watch that, I would really suggest that you do because uh, that'll it's kind of an important Christmas story where we wove in some things looking ahead to the future as well. But anyway, this Sunday, we're calling it an old-fashioned Christmas because we will be singing a lot of the old Christmas carols. There'll be new ones too, some really good new ones. And the theme is Jesus, the light of the world. But I, uh, Susan Rock is going to be our worship leader, and I hear we're going to have a cello is that what you call how you say yes. it cello and the violin and all these other instruments and we'll be singing the songs together and that'll be really good and celebrating jesus the light of the world the next sunday the 26th will also be a christmas service and we're calling that a country christmas and uh, kent will be also leading that that time kent dudley and in song and worship, but the theme will be Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Then also, we want to mention history in the baking. I got a little glimpse of that last Sunday. I saw part of the practice and got to see Joy and the others as they were practicing together. And the, the singers, we have the dinner bells, is that what they're called? The bells? That was a name for some different people, and I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, somebody, <laughs> there's a group that's going to be singing. But anyway, it's been postponed, not canceled, but postponed to January 8 and 9 at 2 o'clock on each of those days. And you can exchange your tickets if you already had them for December. Um, performance, you can uh, exchange those for one ones in January 8 and 9 or you can get new ones or get a refund and there are also new posters and flyers you can pick up on Sunday and we want to invite people to come It'll be a real great time to reach out and it's going to be a fun time together you know a lot of laughter and and so forth so 
And there's mystery. We'll see if you can figure out the mystery before it unfolds in the in the performance. So we'll keep praying for Sir Erholtz, our director, and the whole crew there. And then anything else? Forgiving. We mentioned giving earlier, but um, forgiving. We have boxes. If you're here, there's boxes in the back. And um, for our tithes and offerings, but then you can also mail them to 10th Strike Community Church Box 67 here at 10th Strike, Minnesota 56683, or you can give online at 10strikechurch.com at, at our website. I think there's a button that says donate. And so we thank you, the Lord helps us to be cheerful in our giving. Now you're going to take a little tour here and see some of the decor in the church that you did not see last last Wednesday. And so we're going to let Joyce and Joy lead the way with that. Yes. We've got more things to show you. We're going down our hallway here. This way you get to see Joy. <laughs> Past the bathrooms. And we'll swing in this way into the sanctuary. We saw the sanctuary last week. Well, we added stuff to this tree. Beautiful Christmas ornaments. And again, I'll just say that almost everything that you see with the decorating has been donated over the years. To the church and that's why our big trees are still the old-fashioned kind that take a lot of time <laughs> to put together but over here we added this nativity and i'm gonna let joy just feature it this is a nativity set that we don't know where it came from we found it many years ago i think here at the church i'm not sure if it was up in storage but it's very old but it was in really poor shape so Suvin tassel had the thought she took them home and she did a light stain wash over each of them because they're made out of wood they're handmade. I know they're handmade. And um, when she did that, the life came back into that, into these pieces. But this is, when we set them up here, I think it was last Wednesday, there's just significance. I feel it under the old wooden cross. There it's featuring the nativity. So here at TCC, we celebrate creativity. We celebrate um, woodworking, all that kind of thing. And so this is just a treasure, a very old treasure. And now we're going to go into the foyer. because there's something I want to show you before we go downstairs to the children, children's area. Joy, I'm going to let you feature this. See this? Santa kneeling at the manger. Now this is something Going way back years ago, Steve saw a print of that. And for years, we would just look for it. It's before you could Google things and look online. And many years ago, we were in a thrift store, and here this piece was there. And we love it showing Santa Claus kneeling at the manger of baby Jesus. So 
So I'll let you take a look, just that whole. There's a peace and a calm here. And then when the candles are lit on Sunday, it's wonderful. <clears throat> now we'll go downstairs to the kids' area. I wonder if they've ever seen this. This beautiful uh, tree that Kathy Cootley crafted. Look at that. Look close at the wood. She crafted that out of wood to beautifully fill this um, hallway. This is in the hallway on the way to our kitchen and fellowship hall. So let's go downstairs. Here, we'll feature this. Marilyn Glidden painted that from our church. I love it. And this picture is an original painting from the 60s. Someone in the community, if I understand right, painted it and gave it to Ten Strike Community Church way back in the 60s when the first park was built. So we love to feature it. And here's Kathy. I'm going to let you take <laughs> okay. over. Okay. Well, hi. Welcome to Kids Church. This area was just decorated last week and joy has pretty much done all of this area around the corner it looks so beautiful with all of the decorations she's put up in here the trees and you want to go in your room over here to table so this this is where joy teaches and this is the wonderful little room she works in. She's got her little touches all over. That usually is lit up. This is the larger gym area for the really small children. And then around the corner, um, this is another teaching room in here. There's work in progress going on now. So this is another area that the preschool sit and learn. We're, whoop, okay, so then come this way. I think it was a, just a big circle we went around. And then the cute little thing she's done to the tables. This is where the children eat their snacks. And then down into this area, this is where the children, the elementary children play. And here, on the puppet stage, we have a lot of fun in this room. And we just recently, got our boys' bathroom fixed, and so we're able to use that, which is really nice. And then this is the room where the elementary, um, we do all of our teaching in here. We have a lot of games set up around um, the tree last week. The children put that together, and I know they had an awesome time, and it looks beautiful. They did a great job, and what I was working on today um, if you come around here, I give out little Christmas bags to all of the kids. And so if you come this Sunday, children, and next Sunday I'll have Christmas bags for you. Most of it's candy, but there'll be other things. Is Ellie smiling? Ellie, I have with me today my little granddaughter. And I think that's it as far as decorations and things to show you. So, um... So is this the end? Of the, oh, okay. Thank you for joining us this week. It was a pleasure and a privilege. So have a good week.